Hello everyone and welcome back to Math with Dr. War. I know I've been gone for a while but I'm back, took a little break and it's January and it's 2022 and the GED is back again. So I want to talk about the GED test that we're going to be seeing in New York. Now I want to talk about the differences between the task test and the GED test. So we all know that the task test, it had five subtests. You had math, social studies, science, reading, and writing. In order to pass a subtest, you had to get 500 points on each test. And then the writing test, that had the 500 points. But then on the essay section, you had to get a two or higher. So you had um, two readers who read your essay and graded it. Now on the GED, there are four subtests. So you have mathematics, which they call mathematics, mathematics reasoning. You have social studies, you have science, and then they have reasoning through language arts, RLA. Now, the range for GED is 100 to 200. So I know back in the day, the old GED that we had back in the day, in order to pass it, you had to get a 410. Well, here, no. Their scoring is ranged between 100 and 200. And they say that if you want your GED, your scores has to be 145. So that's the minimum, 145 or higher and able to earn your GED diploma. Now, the GED also have these different standards, two other standards with different ranges. If your scores are between 165 to 174, they call that GED college ready. And depending on the college or the program, you may be exempted from remedial classes or placement tests. And you could be placed in credited classes. Now, again, this depends on the college or the program. Now, if your GED scores are between 175 and 200, they call that GED College Ready Plus credit. So again, you could be exempted from remedial classes or the placement test. You could be placed in credit courses and they also give you up to 10 credits, up to 10 credits. But again, it depends on the college or program. So you could go to a college and they could say, I don't care what the GED says, you know, you got to start, you have to take our placement tests and depending on what scores you get on the placement test, you may end up in remedial. So again, all of this depends on the college. Now the GED test, uh, social studies is just one continuous test for 70 minutes. The science is also a continuous test, 90 minutes. Now the reason through language arts, now that's 150 minutes and that test is broken up into three sections. Section one is 35 minutes. Section two is 45 minutes. This is where you have the writing component, where you have extended responses, which are timed separately. And if you're on the computer, there's a 10 minute break, which means the computer is going to shut down and then restart after 10 minutes. And then you have section three, which is 60 minutes. The math portion, which is mathematical reasoning, is 120 minutes. And similar to the old task test, you have part one where you cannot use the calculator and part two where the calculator is allowed. The GED test is going to take you 430 minutes or seven hours and 10 minutes to take the test. Now, you can only take the test three times in a year. Now, if you fail a test, you can retake it within 60 days. If you sign up for a test and you didn't cancel it and you're a no-show, you got to wait 60 days as well. So I would suggest that if you sign up for a test and you can't make it, please cancel it because if you don't, you're going to have to wait 60 days. And if you're in New York State, you don't have to pay for the test. There's something in the Constitution. I can't think of it right now, but it was placed there from long, long time ago. So if you are in New York, you do not have to pay to take the GED test. As we were transitioning to this new test, I was getting questions on my channel every day and I tried to answer folks. One of the questions I kept getting was, uh, I pass reading and fail writing, what test do I take? Or they'll say, I pass writing and fail reading, what test do I take? Well, if you only pass one of those, you got to take reasoning through language arts. If you pass reading and writing, you don't have to worry about anything, you're good to go. 
But if you fail one of those, you got to take reasoning through language arts. People have been asking, when do I get my diploma? They'll mail it to you within 8 to 10 weeks. And the big one was, are my previous passing subtests valid? And the answer is yes. So if you have scores from the 2002 test, those are grandfathered and valid. And if you have passing tasks, subtests, because the task has been in effect from 2013 to 2021, those also have been grandfathered. So suppose you pass science on the 2002 test, you don't have to take science. Suppose you pass math on the task, whether it was 2013, 2014, 2016, you don't have to take it. It has been grandfathered. Now, the GED votes give you multiple a range of question types. So you have multiple choice, you have fill in the blank, you have drag and drop, select an area, drop down, and then for the language arts, they have this extended response. And they do that because they're like, okay, you're going to see a variety of questions when you go to college, when you're in the workplace. So you have to be able to do these things. So they have a variety of questions for you. I don't know what they look like on the paper-based test, but if you're taking the computerized test, you will see a variety of these question types. My channel is mostly dedicated to mathematics. So I want to talk to you about the test topics you're going to see. So you're going to have basic mathematics. And in this area, this is where you're going to see the non-calculator. They'll be asking you to place fractions and decimals in order. They're going to want you to find multiples and factors. You're also going to have to be able to work with exponents, like simplify numerical expressions with exponents. I did that on my channel, the laws of exponents. The best thing about this is that it isn't like the task test. <laughs> they're not going into the difficult. They're not going into the weeds. As long as you know the power rule, the product rule, and the quotient rule, you're good to go. We all know the task that's went in the weeds with this stuff. Um, you also have to be able to find the distance between numbers, which is absolute value. Um, you have order of operations. They can give you whole numbers, decimals, and fractions. Uh, you have to be able to calculate and compute. Calculate and compute with squares, square roots, cubes, and cube roots. Um, on defined expressions, I have a video of that on my channel. So those are your non-calculator topics. Now, for the basic math, the calculator topics would be finding unit rates. So these will be like your word problems using scale factor to comment, convert dimensions between scale drawings and then solving multi-step problems that use ratios, so proportions, the and percentages will be used in like the other areas. Interest, percent increase, percent decrease, commissions. Then we have geometry. So on my channel, I did extensive geometry. So we're not going to have to re reinvent the whole wheel here. Some of the wheel, but not all of the wheel. So in the geometry section, you have to be able to find the side lengths of triangles, rectangles, and polygons when you're given area or perimeter. And the best thing about the GED test is that they're going to give you the formulas for area and perimeter. Remember on the task test, they would only give you the formulas for volume. <laughs> now we have all of them, thank God. Um, you also have to be able to find the area and the perimeter of triangles, rectangles, polygons, and composite shapes. Uh, you have to be able to find the area and the circumference of a circle. You must be able to find the radius or the diameter of a circle when they give you the area or circumference. Um, Pythagorean theorem, did that on my channel, so that should not be anything new. Volume. I did that on my channel as well. Surface area, I did not. So you're going to be seeing a video on surface area. Now, they did not pull out the statistics. <laughs> Don't ask me why they chuck the statistics 
in with the geometry, but they did. So in the geometry section, you're going to have to be able to construct and explain um, data from a bar graph, circle graph, dot plot, histograms, bot plots, tables, scatter plots, and line graphs. Interesting. Um, you have to be able to find mean, medium, mode, and range, and also find a missing find a missing value when you're given the average. So some of this stuff is on my channel already. So counting techniques. Now counting techniques, which are permutations and combinations. This was on the task test, like in 2013, and they took it off. Hmm. Now it's back because it's in the GED. And last but not least, probability of an event. And you've seen that on my channel. So this is the geometry section. Basic algebra. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, and factoring linear expressions. Evaluate algebraic expressions. You should be familiar with that. Um, creating algebraic expressions. So that's like when they write it in words and then you have to write it like a, either an equation or expression. You have to be able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide and factor polynomials. Uh, you have to be able to create polynomials from a written description. Now, you have to be able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide rational expressions. And I have a star next to that because that is hell of a difficult problem right there. Now, when I do this on my channel, some of you are going to scream and holla. So that's why I have a star there. Um, write an expression from a written description. Use linear equations to solve real world problems. You are familiar with that. Um, solve a system of two linear equations. I have a star next to that because again, you're going to holla because you can't use plug and chug. So remember when I taught this for tasks, I tell my students, uh, they give you the answer so we can plug and chug. Well, with the GED test, that plug and chug doesn't work because they don't want you to use it. So I'm going to have to teach you how to actually do this. So as I'm talking about it, I'm making a face because you're going to have to practice. Practice. Um, solve inequalities and graph the answer on a number line. That is pretty okay. And then we have quadratic equations with one variable. And I've done quadratic equations. But the thing is, I told students, you know, if you didn't really get it, don't worry about it. Now you have to get it because you want to get that 145. So this is our basic algebra. And finally, because there are only four sections, you have graphs and functions. And uh, one of the topics is the coordinate plane. So you have to be able to locate points, so I mean plot points and read points, and then graph like a linear equation on the coordinate plane. You have to find a slope of a line from a graph, equation, or table. Now, we've done this already, um, so it shouldn't be that too difficult. You have to determine whether an equation or a graph show the same proportional relationship. That is not so horrible. You have to be able to identify the features of graphs and tables for linear and nonlinear relationships. You have to find the equation of a line when you're given the slope and the point on a line. Now that is a little bit difficult and something you have to practice a lot. Um, you have to be able to find the equation of a line if you are given two points. A little bit difficult, but if you practice, you'll get it. Uh, you have to be able to use the slope of a line to solve problems and identify whether the lines are parallel or perpendicular. I've already did on my channel, um, you know, how to find a slope. So it's just adding an additional layer here. Then we get to functions. You have to compare functions if we show them to you as a table, graphs, equations, or written description, identify a function if I give you a table or a graph, and then last but not least, evaluate a function. 
So I took a look through and um, there's some similarities in questions. There are some differences. There are some questions that I have never touched before. I hope this has been helpful for many folks and answer some questions about what you're going to be getting yourself into in the next couple of months. I'm here and I'm going to be working with you. Um, my first couple of videos that will be coming out will be in the basic uh, mathematics area where we're not using a calculator because on all of my research, that's where most people fail. They cannot do the basic math without the calculator. So those videos will be coming next week. So please look out for them. In all, thank you for the support. I am here and we're going to continue our mathematical journey in GED. And good luck for all those people who are coming up on a test. As always, please like, subscribe, share with anyone who is out there trying to get their high school diploma um, to let you know that I'm just here for you for mathematics. So I'm going to hear from math. That's the only thing this channel is about, but I just wanted to give you a background on the entire um, GED. So thank you, everyone, and have a great day.